In this video, we're going to talk about quadratic functions and their transformations. Uh, in order to be able for this to make sense, if you uh, watch the video on transformations of functions, you should be in good shape. Um, otherwise, you might want to go back and review those if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Uh, otherwise, these, these really won't make any sense, but I'll do my best anyway. Okay, so we're going to talk about the parent function of a quadratic function, and then we're going to also look at its graph. The parent function, that's when uh, we just have like the basic uh, beginning function. And then for a quadratic, that would be f of x is equal to x squared. So x squared, anytime the largest exponent is 2, that is a quadratic function. And this would be the parent function of that graph. Uh, sorry, <laughs> parent function of that type of function. Okay, what does this graph look like? The shape of a quadratic is called a parabola. Um, it has a nice smooth uh, curve at the bottom. It is not a sharp point like an absolute value. Absolute value has a sharp point. Quadratic is more U-shaped. Uh, it's helpful usually to make a table of values, so we can go ahead and do that. When in doubt, use two negatives, two positives, uh, and zero. Negative two squared would be four. One squared is one. Zero squared is zero. One squared is one. Two squared is four. So we're going to graph these five points. Negative two up one, two, three, four. Negative one up one. Zero, zero. One, one and 2 up 4. And again, when we connect these, we connect them with a nice curve. Do not put a point at the bottom. Uh, parabolas do not have points. They have curves. So like I said, this is a U-shape. The name of this graph is called a parabola. Every parabola will have this uh, either a bottom point, a minimum, or if it's upside down, it will have a maximum. That point that's either the, low, the lowest point or the tallest point is called the vertex. So you, generally when we're graphing quadratics, we graph it and we move it based on where the vertex moves to. So we want to kind of keep up with the vertex. Um, once you know the vertex, if you have some ideas as to how to find the points near it, you can just use those ideas. Otherwise, I always suggest making a table of values around the vertex. You want to use two numbers that are just smaller than the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex, and you want to use two numbers that are bigger than the x-coordinate of the vertex. So if the vertex moves to, let's say, 3, and you want to do a table of values, I would suggest using x equals 1 and 2. 3 is your vertex, and then also 4 and 5, and that should give you the, the general idea of the shape. If you only do numbers that are bigger than the x-coordinate of the vertex, you're only going to have half the parabola, and that's going to be a problem because you need it to make a, either a u-shape like this or if it's upside down, it'll be uh, like a frowny face. Sad. OK, the other thing that you have to know in order to be successful with transformations is what happens to these graphs when things move. So in order to have an idea of how these graphs move in the coordinate plane, it's important to talk about one way of writing quadratic equations, and that's using what's called vertex form. So when a graph of a quadratic is written in vertex form, this is vertex form of a quadratic. There are other things that can also be written in vertex form. So this is specifically for quadratic functions or quadratic equations. It would look like, I'm going to use g of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Um, and then let's break down each piece. So this here, this tells us actually two pieces of information. First of all, it tells us whether the graph is going to open up or open down. If the graph, we know it would open up if A is positive. So graph opens up if A is positive, meaning we have like the smiley face, right? So it's positive, we're happy, we're smiling, it's a smiley face. Um, we know the graph would open down if A is negative. And down, it's negative, it's sad, it's frowning. Um, so it tells us whether it's opening up or opening down the, the parabola. That's one thing it tells us. The other thing that A tells us, it tells us whether there's a stretch or a shrink. So we know that there would be a stretch. And this gets a little bit weird. So we don't really care what the sign is necessarily. Um, and the way that we say that mathematically, if we don't care about the sign, is we only we focus on the absolute value. So there's a stretch if the absolute value of a is bigger than one. So if it's two or negative two, eight, negative seventeen, 
If A is any of those numbers where the absolute value, just the value of the number, regardless of the sign, is bigger than 1, there would be a stretch. There's going to be a shrink if the absolute value of A is less than 1. And then there would be neither a stretch nor a shrink if A was equal to 1. Um, the other important thing to note here is that we have these other variables H and K. And if we write those as an ordered pair, H comma K, this is the vertex. So remember what the vertex is? On a graph that opens up, it's the minimum. On the graph that opens down, it's the maximum. So it's really important. We want to be able to identify the vertex to know how the graph is moving in the plane. OK, so we're going to look at some examples based on these two ideas of the parent function and the way that graphs can transform in the coordinate plane. In letter A, we have g of x is equal to x squared minus 2. So how is this different than this? Well, this graph is being moved down two units, right? If we think back to, to functions, if it's not happening directly to x, but it's like near x, that's usually a vertical change. So we want to move everything down two units. And again, this is up to you how you want to kind of like piece this together. But generally with parabolas, you need five points. We might start with the vertex. Now, if I want to use the vertex form, um, that would be x minus h. So since there's nothing being subtracted, the uh, x coordinate is 0. And then this is plus k, it would be minus 2. So we've identified that the vertex is at 0, negative 2, always an important thing to do. As I mentioned, it's going to move down two units, and that's exactly what happened. This vertex is two units lower than this vertex, which was at the origin. So now I would go down two units. From here, it's up to you how you want to handle these quadratics. If you, just, if you know since a is equal to 1, right, there's nothing being multiplied to x squared, so a is 1, so there's no stretch or shrink, you can just follow this pattern that from 0, you need to go over 1 in either direction and up 1 to get to the next pairing of points. And then you would go over 2 and up 4 to get to the next. That's a little bit you know, abstract, and that's fine if that doesn't work for you. My next suggestion would be a table of values. For a table of values, you want to use, as I mentioned before, the numbers around the x coordinate. So you want to go 2 away from the smaller side, which would be negative 2, negative 1, then 2 on the bigger side that are bigger than 0, 1 and 2. And then you can plug those in and see what you get here. If I plug in negative 2, that would be 4 minus 2 is 2. I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. So then I can graph these. Now, as more abstractly, you don't necessarily need to do the table of values if you know the pattern for quadratics. Start here, go over 1, up 1, there's 1, negative 1. Go back to the vertex, do the same thing on the other side, over 1, up 1, there's negative 1, negative 1. So these are graphed. Now let's do the other two. Go back to the vertex, go over 2, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 2. At the vertex, go to the left 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. There's negative 2, negative 2. Uh, sorry, negative 2, 2. This should be parabola shaped, so a nice curve at the bottom. And that would be the graph for letter A. Letter B, how is this different than our parent function? Well, our parent function, the vertex is at the origin. This one is getting shifted to the left. Remember, when it's inside the parentheses, it's like the opposite. So it looks like a plus 2. I mean, it is a plus 2. But what that does to the vertex is it shifts it to the left. It goes the opposite direction than what it looks like. So this graph would have a vertex at negative 2, comma 0. And then again, it's up to you how you want to find two points on the left of the vertex and two points on the right of the vertex. So negative 2, 0 is over here. If you want to use a table of values, you can. Um, I'm not going to for this example, but please do if that's what you're comfortable with. Uh, if you do a table of values, you should go 2 to the left. So you should have negative 4, negative 3, negative 1, and 0 as the x coordinates, and then figure out the y coordinates of those. For me, since there's no stretch or shrink, I know that the next two points on either side will be over 1 and up 1. So there's a point at negative 3, 1, over 1 and up 1 negative 1, comma 1. I also know I can go 2 to the left and up 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 to the right and go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can connect these to make a nice, smooth parabola. So this point, let me just clarify this, 1, 2, 3. This is negative 4, up 4, negative 4, 4. 
and this is 0, 4. For letter C, we have h of x is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 1. So this one, the vertex has moved significantly. It's moved to 3, comma, 1. Okay, so it's going to be over to the right 3, right, because it's x minus 3, so it moves to the right. It's the reverse. And then when it's outside the parentheses, it's the same. So it's plus 1, we go up 1. All right, so 3, 1 would be 1, 2, 3, 1. And again, it's up to you. If you want to use a table of values, you want to use... The two x numbers that are just in front of 3, that would be 1 and 2. Then 3 is the vertex. Then you want to also use 4 and 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's the numbers that are all around 3. I just know that since a is 1, I can go either direction. I symmetry to these graphs, over 1 and up 1. I also know I can go over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. My graph seems to be a little bit off-center. This should be a nice symmetric graph, but just because I created the graph myself, it's a little bit skewed and off-center. So I'm going to tell you what these points are, so we're all in agreement for these. So the vertex was at 3, 1. Then these two points, this one here, is going to be 2, 2, and this one is 4, 2. Over here, this point is 1, 5, and this point is 5, 5. And those are some graphs of quadratics.